This is video four of section three, the interview. This video will focus on the question design editor. It's your authoring workhorse and the place where you'll spend the majority of your time during the interview development process. I'll walk you through the different ways to access the question design editor, affectionately known as the QDE, and then we'll discuss its various components. In subsequent videos in this section, I'll cover more in depth how to use the individual components. There are two ways to access the question design editor. The primary way is through the pages tab within your interview. You can either single click on a page name to highlight it, then click open in the top toolbar, or just double click on the name of the page and the QDE will open up. You can also access the QDE from the map tab. To open the question design editor, you either double click on a page node, the square image on the map grid that represents a page, or you double click on the name of the page. Either way you access the QDE, once it's open, you can access all the features and tools within it. Because we love to support authoring choice, we also have two ways to experience the question design editor. The standard or default way of authoring now is what I call the scroll to see it all. It shows you all the features of the QDE and you scroll down to access the different sections. It's also referred to as the full view. Harkening back to the way authoring was done in A to J Author versions one through four, when it was a downloaded flash-based tool, we have the tabbed view as well. This shows you the different sections of the QDE as tabs across the top and lets you flip through them as you build out your page. You can toggle between the two views as you're working to find the style that works best for you. I'm a full view type person, so the rest of my screenshots in this section will be taken in that view. It's the same content in either view though. At the top of the QDE is the page information section. This contains the step that the page is located within, the name of the page, and author notes. Pages and steps have a child-parent relationship. A page has to be connected to a step, but a step can exist with no pages inside of it. In this page info section, you can change the step that is associated with this page. It's a drop-down list, so it'll only show you steps that exist in your interview. You wanna add this page to a new step, you need to create the step on the Steps tab first. The name of the page is editable by clicking into the Name field. You'll notice that our pages are usually a number, then dash, then page name. That's because pages are organized alphanumerically by step in the Pages tab. So I number by pages sequentially in order to see them in the Pages tab in the usual order an end user will experience them. It's not mandatory, but it helps me to see the overall flow of the interview just by its order in the Pages tab, List of Pages. Finally, in this section is the Notes field. This lets you leave notes for yourself or future authors of this interview. End users won't see them. Only those who open this interview within A to J Author will be able to see it. Under the Page Info section is the Question Info section. Here's where you'll add the text to ask the end user a question or provide them with information. When you click into the text field, your text editor options will appear. Within the question text field, you can embolden, italicize, underline, block quote, indent, outdent, create bulleted or numbered lists, add or break hyperlinks, and add pop-ups. You don't have the ability to change the font, size, or color of the text. That's baked into A to J Author's CSS styling and also the user's browser settings. Under the text field is the citation field. Any place that you see a citation field, you can add notes or actual citations for future you or whoever is periodically reviewing the interviews for legal sufficiency. These citation fields are pulled into a citation report that can be run in the reports tab. They're a great place to explain why you're asking questions in an unusual way or in the logic or field section below to explain why you set a specific parameter or condition. They aren't visible to the end user. Under this is the audio field. Here's where you can upload MP3 files that are recorded versions of the text. This is a legacy support from the time when the Flash version of A to J Author didn't allow screen readers to properly read the content. We've undergone massive WCAG, that's Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, upgrades that basically supersede the need for this field. But it's there if you want to add additional optional audio to the question text. Under this is the counting variable and outer loop counting variable fields. These are only used when you're creating a repeat loop or a nested repeat loop. Repeat loops will be covered in video six of this section. Nested repeat loops aren't natively supported in A to J Author. There is a author created hack for Hot Docs backend templates for nested repeat loops, and this is an artifact of that. 
Next is the Learn More Info section. The Learn More is a just-in-time learning feature that allows authors to add additional text or multimedia artifacts to a page. The Learn More is structured in a call and response format with the end user thinking a thought and the guide avatar replying to it if the user clicks the Learn More button. The thought the end user avatar has is the prompt field. The reply from the guide avatar is the response field. The prompt field is a straight text field, but the response field gives you the same text editing options as the question info text field above. Also present here is the citation and audio fields like the question info section. The field section is blank by default. You could have an interview with no fields, solely navigating and collecting user data through buttons. So that's why there are no fields present in a blank page. You can add up to nine fields per page. We've intentionally restricted the number of fields in order to limit the number of items that you may ask a user on a single page. The whole point of A2J Author is to break down overwhelming text into manageable bytes. To add fields, you can change the number of fields in the drop-down list called Number of Fields. Each field type has different properties that we'll cover more in depth in the next video in this section. The fifth section in the Question Design Editor is the Button section. Within the Button section, authors can add up to three buttons to a page. Buttons are the main way to move your end user through an interview, but can be overwritten by logic. We'll talk more about that in the Advanced Condition video at the end of the interview section of this series. Each button has a label to display to the end user. Each button can branch the end user to a different next page via the Set Destination button. When you're ready to set the button's destination, that target next page for your end user, you'll click the Set Destination button with the chain link icon. The repeat options in the Counting Variable field will be discussed in video six of this section. At the bottom of the QDE is the Advanced Logic section. This is where you'll script conditional statements that tell A to J author to test some condition, and if that condition is true, to either set a value to a variable and or to send the user to a specific page. Scripting conditional statements will be covered in video seven of this series. So the only thing to note now is that this is where that happens, and there's also a logic citation field in this section. Like all the other citation fields, this is where you should leave breadcrumb explanations for future authors or reviewers of this interview. If you use a specific number, like 45,000 for example, in a conditional statement, explain here where you got that number from and why it's significant. Like $45,000 is the maximum allowed income for a family of three to receive free services from your organization, based on the operational memo dated January 1st, 2024. Then when you run your periodic quality assurance checks on this interview and do a citation report, you can see if all the assumptions that were baked into this interview are still legally relevant. At the very bottom of the QDE are the close and preview buttons. Close saves any changes that you've made to any section of the question design editor. Make sure to use close and not the X at the top of the QDE if you want to make those changes stick. Use the X if you wanna close the QDE without saving. The preview button takes you into preview mode on the page that you're currently editing. That's the end of the question design editor portion of this training series. Join me in the next video on field types and buttons.